The objective of the double pipe heat exchanger experiment is to determine if counter current flow through a heat exchanger is more effective than co current flow. Counter current flow is the process in which the cooling fluid is flowing in the opposite direction of the warming fluid. Co current flow is the process in which the cooling and warming fluids flow in the same direction. The way these processes are performed in a double pipe heat exchanger is by having a small tubing that carries fluid at some temperature in one direction. The small tube is encased by a larger tube that carries fluid at a different initial temperature than the inner tube's temperature and flows over top of the small tube in a desired direction. The difference in temperature of the inlet fluids allows heat exchange to occur. The degree of heat exchange depends on various factors. Largely, the heat exchange depends on the material and the geometry of the apparatus, the thermal conductivity value of the material housing the products for heat exchange will greatly influence how fast heat exchange will take. The higher the thermal conductivity value is, the faster heat exchange will be. The other influential factor in fluid flow heat exchange is countercurrent and co-current flow. It is proven that countercurrent flow of a single pass heat exchanger is more effective in a heat exchange than co current. The experiment performed is designed to replicate that phenomena with the support of numerical data. Okay, this is YSU's double pipe heat exchanger apparatus. The way it works is you got hot water flow coming in here, and then you have cold water flow either coming in here for. Um, the co-current flow, and then it's entered through here when you're using counter-current. The way you can switch between co- and counter-current is by using this, uh, this knob here. When it's in this position, you're going in uh, co-current, and then if you turn the knob to the left, it will be counter-current flow. Throughout the apparatus, you have thermocouples placed, seven for uh, cold water, which relays data to an onboard computer, and then there's also seven for the hot water temperature profile, which uh, is displayed on the computer. Um, the way you can uh, regulate the flow rates, supplying the cold and hot water flows, are using these two flow meters. You have this one right here is for the hot water. You're going to hold this constant at a flow rate, and then regulate and vary the, um, the cold water flow rate to four different increasing flow rates. And then you're going to increase your hot water and do it again for another four and then do it one more time a third hot water flow rate and then increase another four and then you're going to switch it over to co-current or counter-current depending on which one you did first and repeat the process again all this data is really into an onboard computer where you can see the temperature profile and see when all these different um, pipes reach steady state and then you know you can move on and change the varying uh, flow rate for calculation purposes for our experiment, we had to get some measurements. So we used the veneer caliber to get the measurement of four different pipes. The largest pipe represents the cold water flow, which is in all these pipes here. And there's three for the hot water flow, and they all have the same outer diameter. And they're labeled ML and K, which represent these two pipes are M, these two are L, and these two are K. So it might be hard to tell from the video, but they all vary based on their wall thickness. The cold water flow and M have the smallest wall thickness, which makes its inner diameter the largest. And then L and K are increasing wall thickness, which makes K have the smallest inner diameter. Right on there.